Thank you for joining Pioneer. My name is Aaron Pence. I'm from the Norman Central Library. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. Today, in Scratch, we're going to continue our adventure working with the sprites, and we're going to actually make them do stuff. It's going to be super, super cool. This is, this is a fun day. This is when you start to see what Scratch can really do. So back in my Scratch window, I'll give you just a second. I'm going to talk for a minute while I'm doing this. And remember, you can always pause your video. It's totally useful in YouTube to know a couple of simple commands. So I assume you're watching this on YouTube. You can use the space bar to pause or restart a video. You can also use the J key on your keyboard. You can use the J key to hop backwards 10 seconds. So if you miss something totally brilliant that I said, there's not a great chance of that happening. If you miss something, you can just hit J and go backwards 10 seconds and you'll hear it right there again, nothing to it. You can also hit L to skip forward 10 seconds in case you know what's coming next and you just wanna pop forward, pop forward, pop forward. Those keys, J and L, you'll notice are right next to one another. The key in the middle of the two of them, K is a pause button. So you can use K to pause, J to jump back 10 seconds, L to jump forward 10 seconds, K to restart, kinda cool. So it might help you, again, while you're getting your scratch loaded up. Now, like I said, our job is to make this thing move around. But how on earth do you do that? Well, if you remember, all these blocks over here on the left, we only talked about them for just a second whenever we first got started. But these blocks over here on the left are actually the real power of Scratch. We spent our time making sprites in the last video, which is good. The sprites are important characters that'll make it so that we can get stuff done inside Scratch. But the blocks over on the left side are the actual, like, lifters of Scratch, the actual things that do the work. It's really fun. Let me show you how to use them. The first thing to notice is whenever you click on one of these blocks, the sprite that you have selected does the thing that you clicked on. So I'm clicking move 10 steps, and my O is running off of the screen. Oh, no, it's running off of the screen. It's actually escaping from us, right? We can click it to drag it back in case it is misbehaving. If I click on turn 15 degrees, I can see my O spinning around. Super cool. If I click on go to random position, watch this one. Whoa! It just goes wherever it feels like. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of stuff you can do over here. But that's not really programming anything. What you're really doing is just clicking a button and making something happen. That's cool, but it's not as powerful as we need. What I want is I want this thing to be able to just move on its own. I don't want to have to keep clicking the button. I want to have to click the please go do it button and then the computer does all the work for me. So the first thing that we need to make that happen is we need to be able to tie this to what's called an event. Events are a big deal in Scratch. They're huge. They're how everything happens. Whenever something happens on your computer, the Scratch program needs to know that it's time for it to do something inside the program. And the way that that happens in Scratch is what, with what are called events. Events are the gates that open to let things happen inside Scratch sit and mash on the space bar all day and nothing will happen inside Scratch because I didn't tell it to. Scratch is a programming language. It's very, very specific. It doesn't do anything you didn't tell it to do. It only does the things you say. So if I want my program to do something when I hit the space bar or when I click the green flag up at the top of my screen, I need to tell it first that I would like it to do those things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an event block and then we're gonna get a motion block. Let me show you what I mean. In the Scratch Editor, over on the left side, you can see all these different blocks, but then you can also see these buttons on the left. These are categories of blocks. If I click on Looks, it takes me to the Looks category. If I click on Sound, to the Sound category, Events, ca we're gonna come back to that one, to the Events category, and so on. All of these different categories are different types of blocks that do different sorts of things. You can take these blocks and drag them out into the scripting area to start building scripts. And that's when Scratch starts to get powerful because instead of us having to click on them over and over to make it happen, we can just use the events to handle those things for us, to open those gates and then let the sprites do their work. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab a turn 15 degrees block. 
You're going to hear me say the word grab a lot in the coming videos. And what I mean by that is you're going to point at the block that I'm indicating. In this case, it's in the motion blocks. I'm in the motion blocks on the top left. And the second block says turn to the right 15 degrees. To grab it, I'm going to point at the block anywhere that's not the number 15. We'll talk about that in a later video. But any part where it says turn or to the right or degrees. And I'm going to click and hold with my mouse. And then I'm going to start moving my mouse. I have not let go of my mouse button. My mouse button is still held down. That's the grabbing motion that I'm talking about where you click and hold with the mouse button and you don't let go. When you're ready to drop it down in the scripting area, you can let go of the mouse button, just like so. It's the same as letting go. You quit grabbing it. And now you've got a script in there. This still doesn't do anything special. If you click turn 15 degrees, you'll notice my O, that's the sprite that I have selected, is spinning, but that's all. I still have to click it every time I want it to spin. Now, I want you to go to the events button, the events category over on the left. There's a bunch of little hats in here. I always think of these as baseball hats. It's exactly what they look like to me. They have the little rounded top and then the bill sticking out to the right side. If you're not a baseball hat sort of person, well, they're the bumpy ones. But the event that I want is the very top one here. These are different blocks. You'll notice it's shaped differently than the block you had before. There's a reason for that. In Scratch, events start scripts. They are the things that begin them. They, don't, they can't be part of a script. When it says when green flag clicked, it doesn't mean, well, that's going to happen sometime after it starts moving. No, no, that's the start of a script. And every script you write in Scratch is going to start with some kind of bubble baseball hat type button. In this case, I've grabbed the when green flag clicked button. But you'll notice that when I brought it over to the scripting area, it just sat there. It didn't do anything. These things are meant to snap together like puzzle pieces. Do you see the little notch on when green flag clicked and the little divot inside turn 15 degrees? Those match up. They're perfectly the same size. And you can make them snap together if you get them close enough to one another. I want you to watch my screen carefully because when I start to get close enough, you can see a gray shadow pop in to the block that it's going, that the block you're holding is going to snap into. So what I've done is I've clicked and held I'm grabbed on my block, my turn 15 degrees, and I've dragged it upwards to my when green flag clicked button. That gray box means that it's going to snap into place. Watch what happens when I let go. Now they're the same block. This is interesting. We're almost ready to set it loose. It's pretty cool. Now I've got an event that is tied to a motion block. I've got two different things that are now the same thing. Up at the top of your screen, you'll notice up above where it says hello, there's a green flag. If you click on it, watch what happens. Your O spins. Pretty cool, right? You've done it. You've started building your computer program. But there's another step. If we walk away right now, you still have to do all the work. You still have to click the green flag over and 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 than if you had just the motion block and you kept clicking it. No different. Remember, we want the computer to do the work for us. Fortunately, computers are really, really, really good at a few things. There are some things computers are not good at. Computers are not good at telling you that you should go bake a pie. Computers are not good at telling you that they love you and meaning it. Computers are not good at snuggling. But computers are really, really good at a few things. And one of those things is doing something over and over and over again. Computers are super good at it. If I told you to spin around in a circle over and over and over, you would get dizzy or you would get bored. And for goodness sake, don't go do it. But you would stop at some point. You would have something else to do. At the very least, you would need to go to bed later tonight. You're going to have something else to do. Well, the computer doesn't. The computer will spin around forever and ever and ever if you ask it to. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do that using something called a loop. A computer is really good at using things in loops to go over and over and over again. Over on the left side of your screen, I want you to find the control group. That's the orange blocks under event. Click on control and then find the forever loop. It's the third block in the group of the control group. Now, when you click and drag this over, what you actually want 
is for whatever's inside the forever loop. Whatever, see how the forever loop looks like a little mouth sitting there? You want whatever is inside that mouth to happen over and over and over again. So when I drag the forever loop in here, I'm not going to snap it into the bottom of my script because in this case, that's not what I want. What I actually want is for the thing to turn 15 degrees forever. And the way I do that is by dragging up above it. Do you see how it makes a little gray shadow of a mouth? It makes the shadow like the forever loop is going to stick around the 15 degrees. That's perfect. Let go and you should see this. This is the script you want. When you click the green flag, watch what happens. Pretty cool, right? You did it. You made a letter dance. That's awesome. That's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to talk about how to make the other letters move around in different ways whenever you do the exact same thing. See you then.